The rivalry game is here. The Clemson Tigers and the South Carolina Gamecocks square off in Death Valley this Saturday at 12 o'clock on ESPN. I'm going to preview the game and give you my prediction in just a moment, but first, welcome to the channel. I am glad you're here. If you're new, I hope you will subscribe, or if you've been watching for a while, you just never subscribed, I hope you will. It is free. And drop me a line in here to let me know that uh, you're watching the video. I'll, I always like to see those comments. Well, let's dive in. The Clemson Tigers have a lot to play for. Now, today is the Wednesday before the big rivalry game. Last night, the new college football playoff rankings were unveiled, and Clemson is ranked number 12. So that means if they beat South Carolina, who's ranked number 15 in the playoff rankings, there's a good chance Clemson could sneak into the college football playoff without playing in the ACC championship game, which we're still pulling for Syracuse to beat Miami, so we can go to Charlotte. That's another, another subject for another video. Clemson would also get their 10th win of the regular season, which would be quite nice. Let's go to the other side of the football. The team that's coming into Clemson is a little different than the normal South Carolina team that Clemson's had to face over the years. I mean, the South Carolina Gamecock jokes write themselves. All you have to do is talk about history, and you'll be laughing. It would take South Carolina winning for 30 years in a row before they could tie up the, the series with Clemson. It's hilarious. But this is a different team. Starting off at the beginning of the season, it didn't look too bright for the Gamecocks because they barely beat Old Dominion by four points in Columbia. The Old Dominion quarterback turned over the ball four times. That helped the Gamecocks win the game. But as the season progressed, so did they. And so they come into Clemson, 8-3, and three, number 15 in the playoff rankings. And they're looking to take out the Tigers in Death Valley. So let's talk about one of the biggest obstacles in the game for Clemson, injuries. The offensive line has seen a lot of injuries. The good thing is we have a guy like Matt Luke, who's an expert at the offensive line position. Um, and when he was asked about injuries, did he pass the buck on to someone else or complain like a whiny kid? No, he said, well, I told Coach Sweeney that's why you brought me here, to have them ready no matter what. Folks, that's the difference between elite and not. I'm glad he's here. On the other side of the football, you have a defensive line that has, what, over 20 sacks on the season? You have a secondary who two of their players has four interceptions and one has three. Their defense is coming in to do what they can against Clemson in a hostile environment. Let's go back to the offensive side of the football for Clemson. We've seen the wide receiver play get better, thanks to the freshman and thanks to a healthy Antonio Williams. We've seen Cade get more comfortable as the offensive line has improved. There's still a lot of improvement there, and then, of course, what I talked about just a second ago with the injuries. What this game really comes down to is Clemson's offensive playability. I'll get to the defensive side of the ball in just a moment. But it comes down to Clemson's creativity on the offensive side of the football. When you have injuries or when you have less than desirable personnel, which is not the case for Clemson, you have to get creative in your play calling. You can't call the same old, same old. In this scenario, as much as I love Phil Moffa and the guy's incredible, if you try to run him into the teeth of this South Carolina defense, get ready for a quick three and out and a long passing situation on third down. It, it won't be good. Set your stopwatch. They'll be right back on the sideline before you know it, and the defense will get tired. Again, I'll get to that in a second. Clemson has to move the pocket. They have to move the pocket. If they don't move the pocket, especially with an, uh, with an injury, well, or with injuries across that uh, offensive line, South Carolina is going to just lick their chops and come after Cade. He'll be at Oconee Memorial before you can say the word go. So you have to move the pocket. Next, attack the middle of the field. The middle of the field has been wide open for four years now, and you have to stretch it vertically, even if you throw an extra blocker in there to chip some of the pressure so Cade will have more time to throw the ball downfield. If you don't stretch the football field, the ABCs of football says that the defense, and South Carolina has a really good one, number 13 total defense in the country, and number 13, stopping the run, they're just going to stack the box. 
because, well, there's no reason for them to respect the entire field. Clemson has to be creative. They have to do it in this game if they really want win number 10 and a chance at the college football playoff. Let's switch to the defensive side of the football. A lot of people have been restless. They've been irritated with Wes, and we know why, because the Clemson defense has given our team the ability to win eight to nine ball games every year just based on the defensive play, while the offense, on the other hand, has had no identity, uh, identity over the past four years. Yeah, four years, if you really think about it. Whenever the offense has played anyone who could stop them, well, they were stopped. We went back in our shell. I've talked about this a lot. But the defense has started to have some problems due to injury, due to a lack of depth across the defensive line because players graduate. It happens. Now, of course, you have T.J. Parker, Peter Woods, guys like that who were unbelievably talented. Uh, T.J. Parker, he I mean, he's just eating up people. He's killing people at will. But we still have injuries. We've had questionable secondary play. Even against the Citadel, we had busted coverage in the first quarter. There's a lot of questions there. In this game, Clemson has to pressure Lenoris Sellers. This guy's 6'3", over 240 pounds. He can throw. He can run. He's passed for over 2,000. He will lower his shoulder and run over you. Clemson has to contain him. Clemson has to brutalize him. I'm not talking about cheap shots. They have to brutalize him. If they don't, he will brutalize them. Let's talk about their running back. He's a lot like Phil Moffa. They're about the same size. They run with the same aggressiveness and brutality. Rocket Sanders is going to do what he can to open up the gaps that maybe maybe won't be there. And you have you can't arm tackle the guy. You got to drill him. Clemson secondary. This is game number twelve for you. I know things happen. I know there's questions here and there. I know that 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 you've had to replace people. Nate Wiggins was was in the secondary last year, and now he's not. Andrew Makuba is with the Longhorns. I get it. But this is game number 12. You've had 11 games to get ready for this moment, and there's no bigger moment than this right now. So with that said, Clemson's secondary has to communicate. Clemson's defensive scheme has to be aggressive, and they cannot go into this place where they're in limbo, or if they're showing pressure, it's so obvious that Sellers just bounce, bounces to the outside, extends the play, and tosses it up to a six foot five Olympic speed Nick Harbor. It, it, I mean, come on. So, Clemson has to be the aggressor. They have to use the, the home field advantage, the passion of the fans. That moment, to get into South Carolina's head, because if South Carolina gets to rolling, or if you allow them to stick around, they have eight wins. They lost by two points to Alabama in Tuscaloosa. They they lost by three points to LSU. The only head scratcher for them is losing to the most schizophrenic team in college football, and that's the Ole Miss Rebels. They lost by 24 there. In fact, I would look at that scheme and ask myself, what did they do and what can we implement based on our skill set? So, what is the major key to the ball game? Well, Clemson's coaching staff has some good coaches here and there. They have guys like Matt Luke that I just mentioned, who I believe is the best offensive line coach in America. Clemson has a lot of history. Clemson has two national championships within the past 10 years. They had the six playoff run, six years in a row. They had all those 10 win seasons overall. It's unbelievable what was done. But this is a different team, and it goes back to coaching as a majority. If you look at when Clemson plays a good football team or a team that will punch them in the mouth and keep punching them in the mouth, no, no matter whether it's at Death Valley or it's on the road or at a neutral site, Clemson, unfortunately, as of late, has lost those games. I know you don't want to admit it. I hate it too. Sitting there watching a football game, screaming at the TV, what's going on? Why are we going back in our shell? Why do we open up the playbook against NC State versus a big team? 
Yes, I know a, a big team will take away, or a really good football team will take away certain plays, and, and I get that. But you have to be creative in these games. This is a rivalry game, and it's much more than just a rivalry game. You have 10 wins on the line. You have a potential college football playoff on the line. This is big for recruiting. This is big for Clemson's place in the national scene for not only this year, but in the years to come. Unfortunately, I just don't think Clemson has the coaching as a majority. I, it's the same reason that Clemson had a top five recruiting class in 2021, and you still have a lot of those players at Clemson. It just doesn't look like it. Unfortunately, here's my prediction. Can Clemson win this game? Absolutely. They have one of the most passionate fan bases in all of college football. They have fans who love the team, who love the team back in 1998 when Clemson, or not, I think it was 1998, Clemson went 3-8. and eight. Clemson loved their football team then, and they love their football team now. I'm one of those people. I remember that season. It was awful. Don't want to go back to that. Should never go to that in, in, in Clemson football history or in, or in the future. But I just see too many inconsistencies in the coaching across the board. That when Clemson plays a team who is good, who has the talent and or they have good coaching, Clemson just goes back into their shell. They lose the ball game. And that's the reputation they've built. Folks, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that this Saturday... I don't eat crow. I eat fried chicken. But I'm picking the South Carolina Gamecocks, not based on hope, not based on what I want, but based on reality, based on what they've done versus what Clemson has done. I see South Carolina winning this game, and I'll gladly be wrong. Leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know who you think wins this ball game. Tell me why. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. If you want to join the channel, $3 or $5 per month, there's a link or, or a button below the video. If you don't see it, you're probably on an iPhone. I don't know what's up with that, but you won't see it there. I do appreciate it. Y'all take care of yourself. And as always, go Tigers.